Welcome back, guys. My name is Kyle. This is Dr. Cam. Uh, we're back to talk all things genetics and personalized health. Uh, today, we're going to go right back into our bio trends. I'm going to talk a lot more in detail about the different types of gene types we'll see and the best practice for each of those and the best things to recommend to get each person the best results possible. So guys, the client of the future is part two of our three-part series. If you didn't uh, check out the first part already, uh, there'll be a link available on the next slide so you can check that out. It's good to have a bit of a, a base understanding of genetics and epigenetics before we roll into this next bit of content. Um, the whole idea of this is that there's no more one-size-fits-all. Um, there are certain pants that don't fit certain people, and similarly, there are certain exercise programs and certain nutrition programs uh, and social environments that don't fit some people while they absolutely fit another. So what we're going to do first, we're just going to recap on some of the information on um, that we covered off last time, and so that you can just get your head back in the game if you have seen it, uh, so that you can get so we can get right into it. Okay, so the first thing is that we we definitely spoke about. Um, there being very little personalization and that resulting in people wouldn't get response. You know, you do the same program with some people and they just wouldn't get the same type of response out of the training session. And we started getting into the importance of genetics and epigenetics. So genetics is your DNA. It's the blueprint. It's the hardwired stuff in your body that never changes throughout your life. Whereas the epigenetics is all the stuff around your genes that actually influences which gene is turned off or which gene is turned on. Like when you go to the gym, you turn on muscle growth. When you don't go to the gym for a few weeks, you turn off those genes that code for muscle growth. And so your body changes. Your body looks different, even though it's got exactly the same DNA. And what we know now is that 95% of the health on the planet is determined by the environment and its influence on the genes, not the genetics. So the genetics will actually tell you where your strengths are going to be, maybe where some of your weaknesses are going to be, but the quality of your health is going to be determined by your environment. And that is these epigenetic influences, which is more than just exercise and nutrition. It's the environment. It's your emotional health. It's your... Uh, Social health, it is even the, you know, the, the type of weather that you're in, the sleep that you're getting as well. Okay, so what we know is that there's around about 25,000 genes, give or take a couple of thousand, depending on which expert you're speaking to at any one time. Um, but when we're looking at the genetic base, it's very, very complex. And when you actually start looking at the complexity of these genes wrapped up into things like the embryo, we actually start seeing patterns of genes come through the ectoderm, the mesoderm, the endoderm of the embryo, which then result in ectomorphs, mesomorphs, endomorphs. Now, it's very, very important that you define those morphs correctly, and it's defined by bone structure, not by fat tissue. And for more information, you can just look at the last webinar for that. Um, but once you understand the patterns of these genes, you can start to predict some really cool things about the body. Ultimately, PH360 is a platform that takes all of these relationships and puts it all into a big mathematical calculation, um, looking at many, many different layers of science and all of your genes and how those genes have been influenced by the environment. Uh, and it takes into account things like your bone structure to understand your genetic makeup. So what that does is it helps us predict health and disease. If we understand a body's genes and we understand the health condition that those genes are in, then we understand how they're going to fall out of balance and we can do things about it. Now, these types of patterns, like the ectomorphs, mesomorphs, endomorphs, which we'll expand on today, can get right into things like muscle fiber type, brain function, hormone levels, digestion and nutrients needed, the optimal climates, the social environments, the talents of a person as well. Now, Ultimately, just having those three categories is not enough and even having six categories, which we're going to talk about today, is not enough, but it's amazing how you start seeing the predominance of these things within bodies and so we can start making some uh, more general rules to help get a more exact answer for people. Uh, it's, it's sort of like giving us a platform uh, that we can then become more specific on for each unique individual. So if you didn't catch the last webinar, you can check it out here, the healthevents.pa360.me forward slash fitness series. Obviously, I'm Dr. Cam and this is Kyle. Um, and we'll, uh, there's a bit more information on us in the, in, the, in the last webinar as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Kyle to really talk about some of the more practical things about, okay, now we've got these six biotrends. 
what do we actually do with them? How do they actually differ? Uh, you know, it's, it's really going to expand on your understanding of what somatotype is all about from a genetic level. Awesome stuff. So getting into it then, uh, for those that have obviously you've seen this before, these are our six what we call biotrends. So just to kind of add on from what Cam was saying previously, uh, these are trends, like we are all individual, we are all unique. However, it's really fascinating when you start to look at people through this lens, uh, you can actually start to correlate and see, and uh, as we said before, predict exactly kind of what certain people need at what time and what's best for that person. Um, I actually, when I very first got into holistic health, um, as you can probably tell, especially from the first webinar, it is quite a lot of information to take in. Uh, there's a lot of factors you've got to kind of look at in terms of what's right for a person. There's a lot more going on than just diet and exercise. And because the human body is so dynamic, trying to track, measure, record, and collaborate all this information and then give the client the best advice is quite a feat. So um, having PH360 around has really kind of completely changed the way I practice. Uh, it's really took that pressure off and, and it's, it's really added another level of depth to my practice to be able to actually focus on this kind of stuff without being overwhelmed and bombarded with, with excess amounts of information. So that's kind of the true beauty of what it brings. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a little bit more information on each of the different biotrends that we have, just so you can start to get an understanding and an idea of the different types of people you're going to see in the world. And I'm going to put a bit of a, a disclaimer alert on this one and say, what you're going to see here could not be unseen. Once you start seeing these different biotrends out there in the world, uh, you, you'll just start picking people off, and you can. And it's it's scarily accurate how you 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 can kind of predict how they're going to act and feel, and the types of things they're going to need. And it's a uh, it's scarily accurate. So let's get into it. It's exciting stuff. So starting off with, we've obviously got our ectomorph, our mesomorph, and our endomorph stemming from our three different derm layers within the embryo. Um, our classic ectomorph, as we know, these are the guys that are the hard gainers who so struggle on putting on muscle tissue. They've got longer limbs, they're taller in stature, um, and quite light built, light in the bones, light built in general. Um, our connectors are actually a combination. So these are the direct opposite of our, of our classic ectomorphs. Our connectors are a combination of a mesomorph and an endomorph. So physically, these are going to be a lot shorter in stature, a lot thicker in build, uh, so thicker in terms of musculature. They have got a little bit more of a capacity to hold onto a little bit of body fat, especially because they are in that endoderm layer. Uh, but again, they're still going to hold large amounts of muscle mass. But you'll typically, the, the major features you're going to see here is shorter, stockier, rounder in the face, uh, those types of features. Uh, your... Diplomat is a combination of an endomorph and an ectomorph. So these are the, the real big people you see in the world. So they're really tall in stature, but unlike the ectomorph, they've actually got a thickness to the build. So thickness to the bones, they can hold a lot of muscle tissue. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of rugby players will fit in this, with this type of category. Um, so yeah, just big all round type people. Opposite to that, we have our classic mesomorph. So in the, in the fitness industry, uh, this is kind of the the gene type everyone tries to aspire to be. Uh, these are the guys that we typically associate with having more muscle, but funnily enough, as we, as we learned in the last seminar, it's actually our endomorphs that actually hold more muscle tissue in general, but it's the, the perception of muscle is because these are the guys that are gonna be shorter in stature and don't really change within the weight. They're actually the, they're the fast responders to exercise. So these are the guys that can look at a set of weights and put muscle on or drop body fat and, and change comes really easy for them, which is why we kind of always gravitate towards wanting to be in that mesomorph category of in our industry. Um, the, the direct opposite to that would actually be our endomorphs who are actually the slowest to change. Uh, these guys are the people that are going to hold most body fat, most muscle tissue and most mass in general. Um, medium in terms of height, and you'll get some tall, some, some middle-ish build, uh, but yeah, these are the guys that are going to have the slow metabolism, uh, hold large amounts of body mass, and as we found out in our last, in our last seminar, um, the rock would actually fit in and around these categories, okay? And then finally, we've got our ecto-meso. This is uh, my favorite 
bio trends just because I am this person. Um, and these are the guys that you'll find can put on a little bit of muscle tissue. Uh, they're still going to be hard gainers. Uh, they've still got a very fast metabolism. So, they, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to struggle with, with putting on weight too much in terms of body fat. Uh, and they will struggle with putting on muscle tissue, but muscle tissue can be built. It just takes a little bit of extra work for these guys to put muscle tissue on. Um, these guys are more suited to more of your endurance type sports. So you typically see these um, as marathon runners, as cyclists, triathletes, uh, those kind of sports you'll kind of see dominance there. Uh, so what we're going to do now, guys, is actually go into each one in a little bit more detail to give you some practical tips and tricks uh, so that you can start using these out there in the industry when you actually recognize these people within your client base. So into our center then, our classic ectomorph. Uh, these guys actually do better on a higher carb, higher fat diet. Uh, as you found out in the last webinar, uh, these guys are actually more neurologically sensitive and more mind dominant. Therefore, these foods actually support that system effectively. Uh, they're more sensitive in the gut. There's a, there's a couple of genes that um, aren't, aren't, as a, uh, aren't switching on and aren't as effective around digestive, digestive health. So uh, these guys are a lot more sensitive in this area. So this is something that you need to be, be wary of. Uh, and they must rest their brain. It is vitally important that they have downtime from work. These guys are going to be so tunnel visioned and driven on getting things done and they'll work, work, work. And it's actually a case of the, the, one of the biggest recommendations you can give these guys is actually helping them to switch off and take time out to give their brain a rest. If you do that with these guys, you're going to be getting far better results, even, even over exercise, for example. Uh, they can be seen, seen um, they can be perceived, sorry, as aloof, uh, and a lot, and very internal and quite withdrawn. Uh, this is, um, they, they are more logical in nature, um, and it's, it is more of a perception thing. It's just that they're quite, they, they, they prefer alone time. They actually don't mind being on their own, uh, and it's actually better for them to be alone sometimes and actually be taken away from uh, large amounts of stimulus, because as we know, coming from that ectoderm layer, they are more neurologically sensitive, so reducing stimulus is a good thing to do for these people. Uh, as we said, they're more analytical. They will follow rules to the T. So uh, yeah, that's something to bear in mind for future reference and we'll talk coaching along the way. Uh, and as we said, they are very sensitive to the environment. So it's reducing stimulus here that's going to be key for these people. Moving on onto our connectors. So these are our meso endos on the opposite end of the scale. And um, these guys are very high energy because they've got that mesoderm, they've got that mesomorph side to them. So they're going to be quite competitive. But then they've also got the other side, the social side of the endomorph. So um, here, you know, things like intervals, interval training is going to be really good for these guys. Uh, they do have a, a, a better, a, a larger amount of muscle mass. And, and a few more fast twitch fibers, so it's going to work for them to work at that higher intensity. Uh, team sport is going to be key here. Getting them around people, making exercise fun, playful, lots of variety, that is the key. It shouldn't be a chore, it shouldn't be boring. You've got to make this exciting and, and social and friendly because that is what these guys are kind of are driven off. Um, from a nutritional standpoint, higher antioxidant um, is going to be key for these guys. Lower carbohydrate because they, they're more, they've got that endomorph side to them they're not going to be uh, as tolerant when it comes to carbs let's say um, and they will need to eat more when they're active so if they if they if they're quite sedentary then obviously that's going to have an impact but as they get more active then they are going to need to eat a little bit more and like we said before guys for these the connectors is all around connection connections their biggest thing so getting them in and around working with other people partner training group sports even when they're eating food getting them eating with other people is really important for these guys moving on Onto our diplomats. So our diplomats, as we said, are the ecto endos of the world. So these guys uh, are big, strong. Uh, for males, they're very strong in the upper chest. So lots of strong strength training is going to work for these guys. Think your classic five by five strength training. So you know you do five heavy reps, and then you'll have two three minutes rest. It's really slow, it's kind of on their terms, and that's one of the biggest keys for these guys is that they have to work on a real cruisy speed. Uh, so think cruise liner, think, you know, very slow to get started. It takes a while to get, get the engines and the motors running, but once they go in, they can actually work and navigate at a really awesome speed, but it has to be on their terms and you've got to build them up slowly. So the great thing about the, the, the five by five training, for example, is that they get to use the strength, but then they get to work, rest, have a minute, have two minutes, work again, 
rest, and it just works really well for their body type. Now, they are a little bit more hypermobile, so from an exercise standpoint, isometric exercises are good here to help stabilize the joints, uh, and they're not as risk taker as our more mesomorphs, which we'll come to in a minute. So spurring things onto them and uh, kind of throwing them in at the deep end without them having time to digest this information themselves, uh, is it, you want to kind of stay away from that. You need to kind of line things up in advance and give them time to, to mull on things and digest on things and kind of ruminate. Um, so as you said, they love everything at their pace. Uh, from a meal standpoint, they actually need probably three, two to three meals a day. Like these guys can actually go longer in between meals uh, without eating. So the whole eat every two hours isn't actually a thing for these guys. Um, it, less is more in that respect they've got a longer digestive system so that you know just as in life uh, they take a little bit more time to to digest thoughts in, in the digestive system it's longer they take a, a little bit more time to digest food so so allowing time for that to happen is key so short and regular isn't actually the way for all of these guys uh, they, they prefer big open spaces and the environment is really important for for these people uh, the, the natural pattern seekers so big open spaces with patterns and things like that is going to be really good for them on the opposite end of that spectrum, from slow, steady rumination, we've got our activators, or our classic mesomorphs. So these are our adrenaline junkies. Um, they're gonna love competition, they're highly competitive, uh, they're gonna love all your HIIT training. If you think CrossFit, these are the guys that are gonna respond well to CrossFit. It's your AMRAPs, it's your workouts of the day, it's being in that group environment where everyone's flexing against each other and getting to showcase how awesome they are and they're going to do really well on, you know, if I give someone a time, and I've actually worked with a lot of mesomorphs and activators in, 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 in practice and using things like AMRAPs and saying, I need you to complete this workout as many times as you can in 15, 20 minutes, go, it really ramps them up to it's like, I need to beat this. Uh, so things like that are going to work really well for them. Uh, so they love taking risks, so a little bit of risk element in there, as you can see, directly opposite from our diplomat. Um, and from, a, from an exercise, food, and just stimulus point of view, they're going to need a lot of variety. They're going to get bored pretty quickly, so you're going to want to keep changing things up for these people. Uh, from a nutritional point of view, you can actually see the underlying trends here. They need a lot of variety in, in their exercise, and with the food, it's small and frequent. They need lots of kind of variety and, and frequent kind of stimulation there. Completely opposite to our diplomat, who will do well doing the same kind of exercise on their terms, nice and slow, and do well with slower kind of meals and, and not as frequent. Um, these guys are gonna do better with a higher amount of protein. Uh, so these guys can actually tolerate more protein than other, other uh, gene types or biotrends. Your diplomat, for example, actually does better on a higher vegetable, a higher and low, vegetable and lower protein based diet, whereas these guys are gonna do better on proteins and moderate amounts of vegetables. Um, and start, stop, base work is key. The, 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 the real kind of message here for these guys is because they're so adrenaline focused and risk taking and go, 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 the adrenal glands can actually take a bit of a hit and it's their sensitive area. Um, so you've got to really make sure you get that work hard and rest hard mentality across to them. So they need to work, rest, work, rest. And that's why your interval training is, is really good for them to do. So trying to get them to stop is going to be your biggest challenge, but if you can get them to rest, they're actually going to come back better, stronger, and get better results. Moving on to our guardians. So these are our classic endomorphs. Uh, these guys have the biggest bone structure out, out of all of our gene types. Uh, they're the strongest, the slowest, and they have the most muscle. So strength training is going to work really well for these guys, but again, similar to your diplomat, you're going to have to build them up and use your progressive overload principles and actually build them up into that strength phase of training. If you throw them in there straight away, they're going to resist because these guys need to have reserve. Everything they do is all about reserving energy, uh, protective. It's all around nurturing. These are your classic guardians, as the name says. These are the people that in, in a tribal situation are going to have the most energy, are going to conserve the most body fat to look after people like me who's going to be running around the place in a famine, falling apart because I need food frequently. These are the guys that are going to be holding onto that energy and muscle and can protect and nurture. So from a hormonal point of view, they have a lot of nurturing hormones. Um, and everything they do is around that kind of nurturing. It is it's from a nurturing sense. So the body's always going to want to hold on to energy and it's always going to want to leave reserve in the tank because if you think from a survival point of view, if they've got reserve in the tank, they've got enough there to help other people. They want to help other people before they help themselves. And that's something that you're going to have to work with them on a, from a coaching perspective as well. Uh, so from a training aspect, guys, 
build them up slowly and just know that, you know, taking them to failure and things like that probably isn't going to be the best idea because they're naturally going to want to hold reserve in the tank. Uh, they're going to be the most vegetarian from a food standpoint. So lots of veggies is key for these guys. Uh, lowest amount of carbs because they are quite sensitive to carbohydrate. And as, as you probably know from your endomorphs, they do have a slow, the, the slowest metabolism. So with regards to change, these are going to be your slower responders. And it really is here about getting consistency in place and celebrating the kind of small wins with these guys and um, focusing on maybe, maybe finding other measures other than weight is a really good kind of angle to work on. Maybe finding like energy levels and digestive health and just any other measure that you can, you know, how the clothes are fitting maybe or just other measures other than weight because it, weight's not always going to be the first thing that I'm going to change for these guys. However, they can lose weight and they can change. It just needs to be slow and steady and progressive. On to our Crusader at the opposite end of the scale. So these are our ectomesos, so a combination of that, that, that analytical, logical ectomorph and that kind of competitive um, driven end of, uh, mesomorph. Uh, these guys are dopamine dominant, so they're very reward focused, uh, very goal driven. Uh, mind and productivity is number one. So if they've got a task at hand, it's tunnel vision. It's like I am. Everything else doesn't matter as long as I achieve this goal. So when, when, whenever you're setting goals with these guys, it's really important to understand that. Like when 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 they set it and they're ready to go on this, they will do nothing. They're, it doesn't matter what's, ha what, what, what's happening elsewhere, they'll, they'll stop at nothing to achieve the goal. And that can even override some of the more simple things like drinking water, for example, will get put on the side. Even eating food will get put on the side because they're so driven and focused on the task at hand. So um, the great thing about these guys is they actually do really well with um, kind of sequences. And if you, if you if they love a checklist, so if you get a checklist in place, they've got to tick it off. Um, so if you actually, if you set time and you set kind of... Uh, routines in place then for drinking water and for all the, the, the less seemingly important tasks, the more likely to do when they've got a checklist in place and maybe a structure in place and a routine in place that they can follow. From an exercise point of view, uh, they are more they're, they're more kind of geared towards endurance based sports. So we said this in the last webinar, but uh, you'll find these guys do better with things like long distance cycling. I mean you look at your classic Tour de France uh, type bodies and you'll you'll find that all of them pretty much look like this guy here. Um, they're going to do better with lower weights, uh, more volume in the weights. And from a personal standpoint, me being a crusader, I'll just give you a bit of a personal story here. I actually found that I was training to build muscle and I was doing quite well building muscle using kind of high reps, uh, volume-based, superset, drop set, failure-based training. And that worked really well because these guys do have a good intermediate fiber base. Uh, and I periodized and dropped into a five-week block of strength training, five by five, and about three weeks in, my body fell apart. They are not designed to lift heavy, heavy weights. I started getting sore shoulders. I was waking up really tired the next day. My body just did not respond anywhere near as well to that, you know, that high-intensity lift versus that more volume-based, failure-based work. So that's something to take into consideration because they've got that ectomorph parts of them as well. Uh, they're going to require more flexibility, they're quite rigid, and this is across the board, rigid in mind, rigid in body. Um, so lots of uh, spinal flexibility is important here, uh, ensuring you're protecting the spine during training as well because the spine is very rigid. Um, and from a, from a driver motivation point of view, they're quite intrinsically motivated. So they, they are quite competitive, but it's, it's coming from an internal place. So setting in, intrinsically or in, internal goals is going to be really good for these guys. Uh, from a food point of view, again, they're going to need a little bit more carbs. Uh, again, that's because they're mind dominant. Uh, they've got a more sensitive, but again, it's from the ectomorph side of things. And similar to the ectomorph, they must rest their brain. Um, it, again, it work and the task at hand will override everything else. So actually getting these guys to dial down is going to be your biggest kind of issue. And, and getting across them that if they do spend a little bit of time resting, they'll be more productive in the long run is, is the kind of key message trying to get through there. Um, and these guys will be the most skeptical. So they're going to be the most, you know, very logical, very skeptical. Uh, if there's any crusaders watching this now, you, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be wanting more research, wanting more information, wanting more why. These guys are the why people. So guys, that's an overview of our individual, what we call bio trends. Now, just to reiterate, these are trends. Now, within each section and within each gene type, there are still individual factors. So like, 
for a classic example, myself and Cam are both in the Crusader category, but we are completely different people, okay? And we have completely different needs. So it's important to remember that. However, there are many things that do relate and there are many things that you'll pick and there's many similarities between myself and Cam. And you'll see this, like I said, what, what, what you've now seen cannot be unseen and you'll start to pick this out there in the world uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll start to kind of see this and see how you can apply this information in, in a more practical sense. So just to give you more of an overview, just to wrap up, uh, your more mesomorph and your more your connectors and your activators are more movement based. Like movement is key for these guys. So when you're talking big picture results, more bang for buck, uh, you want to go for more movement. Uh, with your guardians and your diplomats and your more uh, your more endomorph type genes, um, your your big bang of fucks actually coming from social. It's not coming from the the, the the exercise and nutrition. Obviously, it all counts. It's all important, but. How, the, the underlying message here is getting them around people. It's the nurturing, it's the family, it's the friends, it's that real social aspect. That's going to be the best bang for book for these guys. Uh, and then finally, with your diplomats, it's going to be more your environment. Okay, so it's just that bit. It's just it's looking at the spaces, it's looking at the work environment, it's looking at um, how the home set up. It's 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 all of those different things actually play more of a role for these guys in helping them create balance and, and express their best self. And then finally, for your ectomorphs. And your, your crusaders and your sensors, as you can you, you can tell from this, they're very mind driven. Everything's in the head. Everything's around the mental aspect. So for these guys, it's it's really about um, helping them to get that balance right and actually switching off and taking time out of the head to relax and recover. So so the big bang for for these guys is working on that mental emotional state. So guys, that's the uh, overall bio trends. I'm going to pass you over to Dr. Cam and he's going to take you through it in a little bit more detail. Right on. Thanks, Carl. That was an awesome summary. The, um, <clears throat> the big thing that I love taking out of that is, um, you know, there is a diet for people's social life. There is a diet for people's environment. There is a diet for uh, the mind. And when it's, it's not to say that the environment's the only thing that's important for these people, you know, down the diplomat end, but, it's, uh, and, but what, what is really, really important is that when that's out of balance, it will create stress that will stop the other things working as well as they might. So we're going to take that information and we're going to bring it into a couple of case studies um, so you can really start to see this stuff in practice and how you actually might um, you know, change some of the way you manage your clients. So we've got our, our circle here and you can see where the mesomorphy numbers are and um, you know, ultimately this is just another way of depicting the same picture. Um, we've got a classic endomorph, okay? Um, in the endoderm, we've got the lung, the thyroid cells, the digestive cells, the pancreatic cells. Now, when you think about this, um, the thyroid and the digestive cells and the pancreas, they're all going to be very much related to um, putting weight on. If your thyroid slows down or if your pancreas slows down or if your gut you know, gets disrupted, then it's going to change the way your metabolism works. So that's going to be at the core of what's going on for this person's health. But what's interesting is that a guardian or a, an endomorph actually has a predominance of this hormone called prolactin, which gives them a social priority. Uh, they are constantly worried about people in their environment and that, that that environment is safe for the people around them. And if it's not safe, it causes significant stress for them. Um, now, when what that means is when they're in stress, they conserve energy because it's like, well, if, if this person is, if this environment stressed, then we might be going through a famine. Therefore, I need to conserve my energy um, because I'm going to be the one who's giving out food because my prolactin is going to make me nurture people. It's going to make me selfless. And that's what it does. Uh, and as a result, well, I need to protect myself now so that I've got energy to do that later. It's a really fascinating role. And we actually perceive these people as lazy when in fact they're conserving energy for our protection. Uh, the funny thing is now that coals and woolies, we don't have um, you know, famines in coals and woolies anymore, but our body and our physiology is still set up for that type of environment. And this is sort of how it gets a little bit out of balance. So when they're in stress, they'll actually work out less and they'll eat more to conserve energy as much as they can. When this happens, the thyroid, the pancreas, the gut, the liver are all affected. We see a lot of, fat, a lot of fatty liver in this kind of population. Uh, we see a lot of diabetes. We see a lot of hypothyroidism, which is all about their body going, right, well, this environment's stressful, so I'm going to slow my metabolism down. And thyroid conditions and diabetes are just extreme examples of that body being out of balance for a long time, whereas another body going through stress might get cancer instead. This is sort of where the disease predictability comes in. So when we're talking about this person, 
It's actually about them having quality time with their family, which is going to be the most important thing. It's like if they know that their environment, like they've got a roof over their head, they've got enough money in the bank to pay for the next week's worth of food, um, and they've got a job that's secure enough, and their family is safe, you're actually going to find that they de-stress generally. But what's interesting is that when this type of body doesn't feel supported by their family or they're feeling neglected or they're not, it creates a stress in their system and that stops their ability to lose weight. It stops their ability to, to make good decisions because they're constantly in a stress. Now their body interprets that as famine, but in fact, it's just, it's social stress, uh, which is, which is, has exactly the same kind of impact on the hormones in our system, whether you're stressed from lack of food or stressed from lack of social life. But this person stressed from lack of social life is, is just as powerful as stress from lack of food. And it expresses the same way, and that's in conserving energy and holding weight. So these guys generally need a lot more vegetables in their diet, and they have a lower requirement for protein. So they're more vegetarian in nature, and that can really stun people. Um, but the other thing as well is that they, when they do strength and they do cardio, it's also along that fat burning zone or lifting once or lifting you know, uh, five or six reps and then having a rest. It's not the same type of lactic threshold type of exercise because obviously they've got less carb tolerance, so they're going to be having less carbohydrate. So they need exercise that is uh, dialed down a little bit so that they don't have to keep tapping into their carb stores because that's a stress for them. They like just cruising along. So doing a big lift, doing a slow walk, that's going to match the fuel that's coming in. And this is the mistake people make is we go low carb and then we make people do really hard exercise that puts this kind of body into a stress. And when we've got a body this big, you know, they might want to lose 30 kilos, 40 kilos. Aiming for small wins and, and talking about support structures in their family is actually going to be the biggest priority. Rather than thinking biggest loser style, we need to get this weight off you in three weeks. It's all about let's just take this one step at a time. Let's make sure your family's safe. Let's make, make sure you feel good socially. And it's amazing how their focus of their weight starts disintegrating. And as that stress decreases in their social aspect of things, it's amazing to see how their body responds. Now, this is a very small example. Everybody's quite different, but from the, the end of Morse, and I've probably treated three, 400 people now in this, this type of fashion, um, where we've looked at their genetics and understood what their priority is, whether it be social, whether it be environment, whether it be exercise, something like that. Uh, and this is a common pattern that we see with this type of body. And this is, this is completely different to normal practice. Like normally we would not be thinking, oh, geez, I need to be talking to them about their family life, you know, or just asking them some questions to see how that is. But it actually has a huge influence on whether this person gets results or not which really matters to your business. So this is a really new way of thinking about things, but it's actually genetically based, which is really quite cool. The second example is a, the crusader or the ectoendomorph. And now obviously you're going to have ectomesomorph, I should say. You're going to have mesomorph. You're going to have muscular tissue that's got to have fairly high requirements, but you're also going to have this neural tissue that's got very high requirements too because they're a combination of both. So when we're looking at this type of body, you know, their brain is the first priority. It's all about the next thing. And when they increase, like, what can I achieve next? What's the next thing that I can do? Uh, and in stress, they actually increase their energy output. They, their brain starts whirring even faster. They do more. They, like, they, they disregard their body, so they actually start losing weight. And they just keep going and keep going and keep thinking because their brain is at the, at the, the center part of their health, so much so that they waste away and then they burn out as opposed to the guardian actually does the opposite and that slow down and conserve energy. And you can see how different, this is opposite ends of the circle, how differently the physiology is responded. And I'm sure as you're sitting there, you're actually thinking of people who match these profiles right now. So with a nervous system and a muscle tissue being uh, highly important, they're going to need higher carbohydrates that actually helps their brain do their thing, do the mental Olympics they're running each day. Um, the brain rest is absolutely critical. If you've got a brain uh, that is constantly on in a body like this, it causes physiological stress that nothing else can. It is incredible how the brain can actually waste this body away just by saying, no, I need to be doing more. I need to be thinking more. I need to be more productive rather than thinking I need to rest. But it's actually in that rest that they slow down. So if you've got a, a ectomesomorph or a, even a, a more ectomorph type body, it's absolutely critical that they are getting this brain rest because they're naturally their brain wants to just keep doing and it thinks the way they bridge gaps is by continually doing, continually doing, but it's actually in the stopping where it happens, where they get that uh, rest, they have realizations and they, and they get um, 
you know, recovery as well. Endurance exercise is going to be really important. And these guys can, these guys are the ones running marathons. You know, they're running at like 85, 90% of their VO2 for an extended period of time. You need carbohydrates, that kind of output. That's, that's what you need. And that's why carb loading for this group is epic. And it's so, so good for their training. Um, the other thing to consider as well is that this person's going to need lots of information. And we'll touch on this both from a guardian or actually from all Biotrend's point of view, how you are going to educate this person because this crusader right here actually doesn't want to talk to you too much. He just wants information and then he wants to leave. Whereas the guardian wants to form a relationship with you personally and to leverage off that relationship to get the results that they need, more accountability, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to talk about that in the last webinars how you actually communicate this information to different bodies because different brains actually need different communication. And if you miss that communication, you miss the whole point. So just those two cases, you can see how different physiologies are and how different the treatments are going to be for different people. I mean, and here we are sitting with these generic templates of strength training and endurance training and nutrition programs. And it's like, whoa, even now, you know, like you can think of two people who respond to this stuff as well as what we've been speaking about. And you can see how these pieces come into play, yet we don't often put this into practice. So when we're talking about the PA360 platform, which is where all this information is generated, um, you, can, you, know, you can go through and you can research uh, all the different gene strands if you want to, but ultimately what matters to the person is like, what is the vegetable I need to eat? What is the thing that I need to focus on? What is the exercise I need to do? It's not oh, do these five genes change this way when I do this particular food? Like no one really cares outside of the molecular biologists who are really interested in furthering the research in that area of molecular biology. Outside that, my clients, I went to uni for 10 years with my PhD. It's ridiculous. Um, and I'm still sitting there like just pleading with patients to eat vegetables. You know, it's that simple piece of advice because I know that if they eat vegetables, all the science that I know will actually come to fruition. But if they don't put the vegetables in their, in their mouth, then nothing happens. So getting, you know, like the output is what they actually have to do. And I wanted to give you an example. These are the six different areas of the PA360 platform in its current state and it's constantly evolving, which is really cool. Um, but from a food point of view, you actually get a list of what are the best foods for me? You know, what are, what's my top vegetable? What's my top herb and spice? What is my best meat? And how frequently should I eat that? You actually get exacting outputs of what you need to have, which is so, so valuable because it's something that we don't normally have. We have, oh, we should eat this stuff, I think, you know, like chicken and sweet potato for six meals a day. But that's not necessarily what people need. And, you know, oh, maybe we should have some onion family. But which onion family? Which one's not going to cause bloating in my body but is going to give me the nutrients that I need for my, for my gut bacteria so that's going to match up with my DNA? You know, these types of considerations are actually made in this program. So you have absolutely no doubt as to which foods to choose from. Uh, and we'll talk about how you can actually use this within scope of practice. Then we go to fitness uh, and we have, like, different exercises that are recommended. We even have, you know, uh, a tip down there, you know, if I notice swelling or increased fluid retention at the end of my training, this may indicate that I'm training too much or too often. So if someone starts seeing signs of this, it's like you know that they're training too hard, which is a really, really useful sign. Otherwise, we just go, no, 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 I'll be right. Like, just walk it off or, you know, or they get, you know, despondent and actually leave your service. But if you're ahead of it and say, well, this is how we know if you're overtraining, then that's really good. And not everyone responds like this when they've overtrained. And that's really important. So... Uh, the next one might be uh, the mind. And so it actually gives a daily digest. It's like someone's written a horoscope based on your genetics and based on your neurotransmitters and based on the way you process thoughts in your brain. It actually talks about, um, you know, how that is going to be best used. So I may choose words in context and speak in grammatically correct way because I naturally engage the left temporal lobe. Like it actually talks about the, the part of the brain this person uses, which have been confirmed in brain studies using EEG assessments, uh, which gives you a complete insight into this person's working. And it also allows them to say, oh, this is my strength. This is how I, my mind can be happy. Um, you know, I may prefer developing an empirical approach to problem solving. So understanding that they need to go, you know, logic by logic, point by point, you know, and in, in collect data empirically um, rather than just trying to guess the result is going to be something that may make their brain happier, which makes their body happier. So, uh, and that's a very individual output. These are quite different for everybody. Then we even get into their environment, like the best places for me, how I should organize my house, the time I should be taking holidays, uh, the time of day where I should be, um, 
you know, resting or exercising or, you know, places that I should avoid, time of year that I should avoid public transport, times of year when my immune system is going to be lower. It's all related to our genes, the way it responds to the environment. Like it's really, really powerful stuff and it's all within the platform right here so people have a, a go-to answer. Same thing for social satisfaction or social life generally. It actually tells you things that you might enjoy socially or career-wise. Um, so understanding these things, uh, you know, and not just the genetics, you know, like you might have oxytocin receptors that are different to somebody else, but what do we do with information about, well, the oxytocin receptors that are a bit weird. It's actually, you do this, uh, you do the, the work that's good for you. You do it in the way that's good for you. Um, and then you also socialize with the people, um, or work in the job that's going to be most satisfactory. So these things, I'm only showing a small amount of this information is actually, Really, there's tens of these these statements for each of these topics uh, that roll out over time. There's a really great app that goes along with this as well. So you, as a coach, you actually don't need to generate this information. You can actually just talk people through it, and in that way, you protect your scope of practice because you're not providing the information. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about that in the third webinar as well, is how you can use this information, like nutrition and like mind stuff, and still be within the scope of practice. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand over to Kyle now just to talk about, you know, um, now that we've got this information, we've actually got this platform that's incredible, you know, what do we do with it? Um, and I'm going to leave that to, in Kyle's good hands. Awesome. So um, once you've got all this information, and as you can see, it is quite a lot of information to take in. Um, the next step is actually applying this to the client that you're working with. Um, for a large part of my career, I've, I've placed the value of what I offer to my client on the knowledge that I had. So I was always trying to give my client more information and more knowledge. And as you can actually see now, for some gene types and biotrends, that will work okay for. But for others, it's not going to work very well. Um, and as a result, I'd, I'd, I'd find that, especially as I got into this more holistic way of thinking and I was applying more layers, I actually would overwhelm my client and, and give them too much information. Um, and as a result, nothing would get done because they feel a little bit overwhelmed with it all. So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is our value, the future of health and the future of the fitness industry, our value isn't going to be based on what we know, okay? Because there's far too much information out there and the human body is far too complex for us to know absolutely everything about what each individual, in each individual, individual gene type, sorry, um, needs at any one time. So our value um, is actually in coaching. Because what's going to happen is in the future, people are going to be coming to us as trainers with their little app or their little book of their genes and their body and all their information. And, you know, even though they've got all that information, you might be thinking to yourself, well, if people can get all that, then they're just going to follow it. And there's, there's no place for us in the industry anymore. And we're going to be kind of wiped out by technology. But uh, that's simply not the case because... If you think about it, guys, how many people right now have downloaded an ebook, uh, downloaded a meal plan, uh, downloaded an exercise program, whatever it might be, and you, you buy a book or you read a book, or whatever it might be, but how many people actually apply that information? Uh, it's all well and good when, when the advice is easy to follow, but then you think about some of your clients that you have right now where you're trying to get things into place with them, exercise consistency, uh, nutritional habits, whatever it might be, and there's, there's certain people that will have barriers and, and, and blockages as to, as, as to sticking to that and being consistent with what it is they need to do to achieve the goals. So the future, I mean, sorry, for example, uh, you know, right now with all the research that we have, with all the medical literature and all the knowledge that we've got of the human body and of health, 93% of people are still not eating the vegetables. So right away we can see knowledge isn't power. You know, that, that whole adage of knowledge is power simply isn't true. Knowledge is potential power. Knowledge only becomes powerful when you actually apply it and use it. And that's where we come in as coaches. And that's where we come in as, as what we call, like to call super coaches. Um, one in eight people with a chronic disease uh, will change the behaviors is another stat that we've got. So one in eight people, like we know 95% of disease is lifestyle related. You know, we know that a lot of these diseases that we see are lifestyle diseases. And the recommendations that our doctors, our trainers, our nutritionists, our dietitians are giving is, you know, we need to change your lifestyle habits to help you manage this disease. But only one in eight people actually will do that. Um, so as you can see, there's a real place for us to actually work with people and get one-on-one -on -one and coach people into to found, creating foundational habits and behaviors long-term. And that's where, that's where our role really does, does lie. Um, as you can now see from the differences um, in the different biotrends, the, our language that we use is going to have to be different for different people. Because if, we, if we're 
prescribing not only the same exercise or nutrition plan, but we're prescribing it in the same language to every single person. It's just not going to go in. Just as the nutrition plan might not work for everybody, the language you use isn't going to work for everybody as well. So as a coach, we've got to change the way we deliver information as well as the information that that we're actually delivering. Um, so motivation and drive is going to be different for different people. As you saw before, the crusader is motivi- motivated by the next result, the next goal, the next step, the growth, the conquering, the moving forward. Um, whereas your guardian, your endomorph, is motivated by protecting and nurturing and being around family. So just knowing these kind of things is going to give us a lot more motivation um, and a lot more kind of inroad into actually helping people create the confidence and drive to actually succeed in the in the suggestions and the and the the protocols that we're we're suggesting for our clients Um, and facts and figures versus trusted another point so uh, as as we've already established some people are going to want more facts and figures so you're more ectomorph people before you meet them for a session uh, if you know you've got them say next Monday you've got them for a session um, and you know they're a more ectomorph client, then you've got to go away and get a little bit more research and get a, get a little bit more of the why and get a few references and things like that to give them the facts and figures because that's what's going to drive them. You know, if you tell them uh, you need to eat this food and the reason why you need to eat this food is for X, Y, Z reason from this study, they're more likely to follow it because it makes sense because everything's about making sense. Whereas with your more endomorph client, if you sit there and start rhyming off all these different studies and things like that, they're going to get bored. They're not going to follow it. It's not really what gets them going and drives them. Um, so, and again, that comes down to how you, how you deliver your information. Some people are going to want everything at once and they're going to run with it. Some people are going to want little bits and they're going to want to see you more often. So again, the amount of times you see people, some people you're going to see weekly, some people you might see once a month for just for a check-in, it's all going to change depending on the type of person that's in front of you. And this is really important to take into consideration. Um, and again, with support at home and, and independent motivation, again, just covering that same point, um, people are going to need different things there. So all in all, guys, the, the, the role of a fitness professional in the future of personalized health is becoming a super coach, knowing how to coach the person that's in front of you and give them the right information at the right time in the right language. That is the key. So I hope today's session has given you a little bit more insight into how these different gene types look. Uh, my challenge to you is to go out there and start trying to pick people in the street and look at your friends and family members and try and pick the bio trend that they, that they are. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at how accurate this information is. And it's really funny when you start seeing some of these trends play out in individuals. Um, in part three, guys, we're going to start to look into more of the coaching aspect of this. So we're going to talk more coaching strategies. We're going to talk more about how to apply this into your business. And one thing that I know that you're probably still wondering is, well, how do you find this information out? How do you actually find out what a person person's gene type is uh, what are the what are the tests that you need to do to, to get that in place so we're actually going to cover that in our next seminar and our next webinar sorry just to make sure that you understand how you do this how you would incorporate this into your current business and your current practice as a fitness professional um, and how you can actually start using this tangibly out there within the industry to get the best results and to uh, you know help your clients long term